thousand run to the camp to thy brethren. Now, David, you all know King David when he was a boy, he's out watching the, his father's flock, a shepherd boy, and his brothers had gone out to the battlefield with Saul and the rest of the Israelites, and they're out on the battlefield facing the Philistines, and, and they were set in array uh, for war uh, against each other. And the Bible says that uh, Jesse come out and had David take them this uh, bread and corn and, and all these things and run to the camp to your brothers. And the Bible says David jumped right up, took right off going. Come on, that's what we have to be, be ready to run. Ready to go, ready to do it. He, he may not understand. Well, he's, he, it's a little part. They're fighting in a war, and I'm just hauling some bread down there to them. You get what I'm saying? And the Bible says that he took this bread, this corn, this stuff, and he ran down to the battlefield, and when he showed up on the battlefield, they were set in array against one another, and then all of a sudden the giant comes out down in the valley and begins to curse the, the army of the Lord and begins to de degrade those that were fighting in this battle and fixing to go to war against the Philistines. And the, Bible, the word says that David says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would defy the army of the living God? And the word says that his brothers kind of wondered what he was talking about, and he stepped up and he says, Nobody else is going to go down there and fight this guy. I'll go down there and fight him. You know what I mean? A, a zeal, a passion, a hunger for, to do what's right. To preach when no one else will preach, to stand when no one else will stand, to proclaim, study, and pray. Stand in the gap. Even if it takes all night praying, you're going to be the one that will stand in the gap praying. It may be some little job that God's called you to do, but you've got to be ready to run, ready to go after it, ready to do what God has called you to do. And the Bible says, David says, I'll go down here and face this uncircumcised Philistine. Saul tries to throw his armor on him. He hadn't proven it, so he couldn't use it. And the Bible says he stopped by that brook of Kidron and he picked up five smooth stones and put them in his bag, even in his scrip, and took it down there into the valley to meet this giant. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel 17 and 48, And it came to pass when the Philistine arose, this giant arose, and came to draw nigh, uh, to, and he drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran to the army to meet the Philistine. You hear what I'm saying? The Bible says he ran to take this bread, and all of a sudden, since he was obedient, since he was ready to run, and all of a sudden he finds himself against something bigger, some great warrior, something in life that seems like it might overtake him, and he didn't get worried, he didn't get concerned, he didn't start begging and crying and pleading that he would help him, and what, Lord, move upon me. No, it says he ran. He had the power on him. He'd already prayed. He'd already been ready. He'd already fought the bear and fought the lion. He was ready to go to ready to run, ready to go and do what God had called him to do and who he called him to be. Are you? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to run? Ready to praise the Lord, ready to glorify his name. And the Bible says that John, when he saw David there, he says, am I a dog? That you'd send this kid out here, this boy out here, he said, I'm fixing to kill you and feed your carcasses to the fowls of the air. But David says, you know what? You come to me with a sword, a shield, and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, and this day he's going to deliver you into my hand. Amen. The Bible says he ran to meet this giant, to meet the Philistine. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that when he come down, he took one stone out, and he gave it a sling. Hallelujah. Out of that, out of that slingshot, and it hit him right between the eyes, and he fell down dead. Imagine the surprise of all those that were watching. Imagine the surprise of all your enemies, those that are around you that think you're nothing, that tell you you're incapable, that you're not a good speaker or a leader or anything, that tell you that you can't go, that you'll never be promoted, that you'll never make it to the ladder of the success, or you'll never be any more than what you are right now. How if you begin to be ready to run for Jesus, he'll begin to elevate you and take you places that you've never been to do things you've never thought you were going to be able to do. That you have to trust in the Lord, believe on him with all your mind, and follow and obey everything he's declared over you. I'm declaring over each and every person in this house tonight, favor of the Lord, blessings, miracles, and promises, and the glory of God to abound in your life and in your family's life, that the presence of God would be there mightily. The Bible says that he fell down dead. And 1 Samuel 17 and 51 says this, Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his own sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. 
Come on, is anybody ready to run in this house tonight? He ran to take the bread, he ran to the bottle, and then he ran and jumped up on his chest to cut his head off. I don't know about you, and I want to be like David tonight. Whatever situations come, no matter how small it may seem or big it may look like, I know that the God I serve is greater, mightier, more glorious than anything ever that's ever been or ever will be. Amen. Hallelujah. You're unbeatable. <laughs> You're unbeatable tonight. The presence of God ruling and reigning in our lives. Yeah. Listen to this. There's a story in the book of Luke, chapter 15, about the, a, a, a young man who came to his father, and he wanted all that, that was going to come to him for an inheritance, and the Bible speaks of it being about the prodigal son. And the Bible says a few days after he'd given him his inheritance that he went and left that place out into another place and began to waste his living on riotous living and, and wanting this ways and began to squander and throw away everything that God had given him and blessed him with and his father had performed and worked for and that he had given him into his possession because he desired it. Listen, the, Lord, the Bible says the Lord will give you the desire of your heart. Yeah. You want it, you can get it. Amen. You want it, he says he will not withhold anything from them that walk upright. Yeah. Upright holy, blameless, faultless, seeking him, believing on him, trusting in his name, coming after him with all you've got. But the Bible says after he squandered all this, he found himself joined to a citizen of this one country, a foreign land, and he was feeding the hogs. <laughs> he found himself useless and worthless, Brother Gillis, and didn't have anything left to do, and had run all out of money and stuff and friends and people, and he didn't know where he was going to, get out how he was going to get out or where he was going to go to next. And the Bible says that he, when he came to himself, he thought within his mind and his heart, and my father has all these hired servants, yeah. and here I am, perishing with hunger, famished. Anybody know what it feels like to be famished when your belly's empty and your gut's growling? And you don't know where your next meal is coming from. Listen, whenever that's the same way in the spirit realm when you're without Jesus. It's like you're hungry, you're empty, and, and you would desire to fill your belly with the husk, with the worthless things of the world, with the possessions and relationships and feelings and emotions that leave you the same way you came. But Jesus, he's the life changer. Amen. He's the one that makes all things new. He's the one that can deliver us from any issue or situation. He's the healer, no matter how deep the cut is. He can heal us. The wound may be big, but he's the healer. It doesn't always have to be physical. I like that. that. Those spiritual wounds of our past and things that have happened to us, people have done us wrong and come against us. Even in our childhood, maybe someone has took advantage of you and hindered you, and that's your whole life has been something you fought with and battled with, and it's caused other addictions to take place. This, this young man was... And Luke 15 was in the same place, was hungry, was destitute, was without. And the Bible says when he came to himself, he realized that all I've got to do if I could just get back to my father's house. You hear what I'm saying? And the Bible says that he got up and he took off that way. Luke 15 and 20, the Bible says that he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Listen, the Father, it's not just us running. He's running to you, Amen. to me. He's ready to run to us. Time of need, time of struggle. And there's some conflict or battle going on. Your heart's breaking. And you don't know how you're going to get out. Jesus is the answer. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He's the one that makes us right. upright and holy. He's the one that takes away the stains of sin and the struggle and the heartache and the pain of life sometimes. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to run tonight because the Father is ready to run to me. And when you realize that he's ready to run to you, man, there's not anything you know can get in your way. Anything can hold you back or prevent you from prevailing and overcoming, having blessings, miracles, a miraculous life of hope in Jesus' name tonight. Amen. God's good, isn't he? He's mighty to save. He's worthy. Is anybody ready to run in this house tonight? Come on, stand to your feet.
Stand to your feet with me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which just so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I'm ready to run. Are you? I'm ready to get there for the glory and the passion and the power of the King. He's mighty tonight. I love him. I want to bless him and praise him at all times. For he's good and his love and his mercy. It endureth forever. You guys want to get a song, Josh, for altar call or something? We're going to open the altars up tonight. Does anybody have a need tonight you want prayer for? Amen. Hallelujah. It's a Thanksgiving week, a time to be thankful. I don't know about you, but I don't just come to the altar to, when I, with my knees. I come to thank the Lord, Amen. to praise Him, to be uplifted and, and empowered by His presence. I come to be strengthened and encouraged by His glory, Amen. by the majesty of His might and His name that is great and glorious and holy. He's the chain breaker. He's the life changer. He's the one that gives us life more abundantly. But we have to be in that place where we can hear Him and seeking His face and believing on Him with all we've got on the inside of us. So if you have a need tonight, you want prayer, maybe you, you're in this place and you've Come in and you've never known the Lord as your Savior. Tonight's your night. If He's knocking on your door, yeah. speaking to your heart, don't resist Him. Don't turn away. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah. Call upon the name of the Lord while we have an opportunity. Maybe somehow you've turned your back on God and you've went away from Him and you're not where you want to be. Tonight's your night. How do we, he, he loves us. He cares for us. He doesn't give up on us. He desires us. Just like that story we read the father ran to him when he was a great way off, reached out to him, pulled him in. Amen? Put the shoes on his feet, the ring on his finger, and the white robe on his back. Yeah. Covered him, helped him, and encouraged him. Showed him how much he loved him. Maybe you need a fresh fire in your belly. Maybe you want the presence of God to lift you up and elevate you to a place you've never been. How do you go ahead and sing that song? So whatever it is, if you've got something on your heart and mind, the Master's here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail. Dot com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching, followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We are located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.